Hello all, welcome back to another video. For today's video, we will be demonstrating how we can identify missing DLLs loaded by a program on a Windows system. With that, we will be walking through how we can obtain code execution by abusing the missing DLLs and this will result in a legitimate program executing our malicious code in a DLL payload file instead. This is very useful in restricted environments whereby only whitelisted programs can be executed. Shown in the screen here is a very useful reference in understanding the concept and fundamentals of DLL hijacking or site loading. It is highly recommended to read through this article. The link to the article will be provided in the video's description, so be sure to check that out and give it a read. The most important thing here is to be able to identify missing DLL files that are loaded by a program. An example is shown over here that uses Process Monitor, Propmon, which is provided by Microsoft themselves to analyze missing DLL files on a Windows system. Procmon is very powerful as it will allow us to analyze operations that are executed by a program on a Windows system. We will be able to observe operations such as reading of files, creation of files, registry changes, and even traffic sent and received by a program. With that being said, let's get started. Let's copy this template code that should be able to provide us a DLL payload file when compiled. We can see that the code will execute the command whoami, and the output will then be stored in a text file called whoami.txt. The program will then execute calculator. Let's copy the code over to our Kali machine and compile it as a DLL payload file. Let's remove the command that executes calculator. Our proof of concept code will only execute the command whoami and store the output to a text file called whoami.txt. Let's change the directory as well to match our Windows environment. As shown over here, the output file will be created in our downloads folder and in the folder called test. Let's compile it with MingW since we are doing cross compilation on a Linux machine. Awesome! There are no errors on the compilation. We have successfully generated our proof of concept DLL payload file hello world.dll. Let's try to see if our DLL payload file works as intended first. We can execute the DLL payload file directly with run DLL32 on a Windows machine. As shown in the screen, the payload works as intended and an output file is created in the directory over here. Now let's get started with process monitor PropMon. I have already downloaded the entire sys internal tools on my Windows machine. Let's execute process monitor now. Let's apply the necessary filters. We should have a filter to filter out DLL related operations. With the path ends with .dll filter shown here and also another filter to filter out only the not found events. Let's apply it and give it a try. As shown in the output, it is showing only what we filtered on. This is good. Next, we will need an example program to analyze. Since I already have the burp suite community version installed on my Windows machine, let's give that a try. In reality, you will need to enumerate your victim target machine first and install all the programs on your own Windows machine to match what your target machine has installed on their system. We can now apply another filter to only display burp suite related events. We can do that by using the process name equals to filter as shown here. Alright, let's get started. As shown in the screen, there are several missing DLLs that we can try. Not every DLL will work. Some will not execute the DLL file but only loads it. Some will break the functionality of the program itself. It is going to be a trial and error attempt to identify which DLL file can work properly and will not break the functionality of the program as it will be really suspicious. Let's try out the very first missing DLL file, wsox 32 dll file. Let's rename our Hello World DLL payload file and move it to the directory where it is being loaded by Burp Suite. Alright, now let's clear the events and try to execute Burp Suite again to see if it works. Oh no, it didn't work. This broke the program as well as we can see that Burp Suite is unable to launch correctly. WSOX32 DLL is a no-go. Let's try the next one in the list, the winmm.dll file. 
Let's move our DLL payload file, which is now the WSOX32.DLL payload file since we have moved it previously, and we should rename it to the WinMM.DLL file name. Alright, now let's give it another shot. Let's clear the events on Procmon again and re-execute Burp Suite. Another unsuccessful attempt, Burp Suite is unable to launch correctly. Our DLL payload was not executed as well as we can see that our folder is empty. If the DLL payload was executed successfully, we should get an output file whoami.txt in this folder. Now it is really a trial and error attempt to go through all of the missing DLL files and find out which one will work. Let's try a few more before calling it a day. This one looks promising, textshipping.dll. Let's do the same thing again and move our payload DLL file and rename it to textshipping.dll. Let's re-execute Burp Suite now. Okay, this looks good. There is no error shown and Burp Suite is able to load successfully. Alright, so Burp Suite was able to launch correctly without any errors. However, our payload DLL file was not executed. There is no output whoami.txt file created in the folder. Let's try one last time, the user env.dll file. Again, let's move our payload file and rename it to the missing DLL file user env.dll. Now, let's relaunch Burp Suite and give it a go. Finally, it works now. As shown in the screen, Burp Suite is loading successfully and we can see that the output file whoami.txt is created in the folder. This means that our DLL payload has been executed by Burp Suite successfully. This is great. Burp Suite is able to launch correctly as well without any errors. As demonstrated, we were able to identify missing DLL files loaded by a program and subsequently abuse it to execute commands of our choice through a legitimate program such as Burp Suite. This is really useful to bypass restricted environments and also to obtain persistence on a compromised machine. Burp Suite was able to execute and launch appropriately without any errors as well, so that is really great. That is all to this video. I hope you all have enjoyed the content and find it to be useful. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!